Hello, welcome to this presentation of our paper on communication efficient string sorting at IPDPS's 2020 virtual conference. My name is Timo Bingman and this is joint work with Peter Sanders and Matthias Schimek, which we did together at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Karlsruhe, Germany. Matthias also wrote his master's thesis on this topic and there is much more information in his work which you can easily find online. In our paper, we consider distributed string sorting and develop two new communication efficient algorithms to solve the problem. The first is based on merge sort and the second uses hashing and prefix doubling to detect in a communication efficient way which parts of the strings actually matter. This second method greatly accelerates inputs like the one shown here on the title slide. These three words are among the longest in the English language, but they can be sorted by examining only the first letter. This first part is called the distinguishing prefix, and it is the key to sorting fast and communication efficiently. We also implemented the new algorithms, and towards the end of this talk I will present some interesting experiments on our local supercomputer, which show that the new algorithms work as intended, and also verify which input sets they are best suited for. Okay, this is just the abstract of the paper. Why consider string sorting? A string is simply a zero terminated array of characters from an alphabet sigma, and we want to sort a set of strings lexicographically like in a dictionary. Strings are different from integers because they have components or letters which can be inspected individually. This means as input we have small n strings containing capital N characters in total. For any given string set, there is a minimum set of characters which have to be read to even be able to sort correctly. This is called the distinguishing prefix, it is colored in red here, and the total length thereof is labeled capital D. In some past research papers, we previously considered sequential and parallel shared memory string sorting algorithms, but were very surprised that the only published work on distributed string sorting was one paragraph in a paper by Fischer and Korpitz from 2019. And that is why we ventured to design, implement and evaluate distributed string sorting algorithms with special consideration for their communication efficiency. So what are the tools in our toolbox for string sorting? There are of course quite a number of sequential sorting algorithms for strings, radix sort, multi-key quick sorts and many variations of these. In my PhD dissertation you can find an exhaustive evaluation of the fastest sequential string sorting algorithms and in the context of this paper we just use the best from that collection. However, for improving communication efficiency we also needed the LCP array. The LCP array stores the lengths of the longest common prefix of two consecutive entries in the sorted string array. And because it is calculated anyway while sorting, we adapted the existing algorithms to also save this information in an array at basically zero extra cost. And when the LCP values of two or more sorted string sets are known, the merging of these sorted sets can be accelerated using the LCP values. And for this we previously developed the LCP loser tree or LCP aware multi-way merge algorithm which you can find in the Algorithmica article. It can be used to efficiently merge two, three or more sorted string arrays with LCP information and exploits this LCP information to skip over as many character comparisons as possible. For distributed string sorting we need this to merge pre-sorted sequences from p different processors. Another algorithmic component we will use is LCP compression. If we have a sorted set of strings with LCP information, then we can compress them by skipping the common characters in the LCP. This is not really compression in the sense of squeezing everything down to a small number of bits, but it is a fast and useful technique to transmit sorted string arrays with LCP information in a sort of compressed form from one processor to another. However, while this technique works well in practice, you can probably see that in theory it is easy to construct a worst case scenario where there is no advantage, simply by having all the LCPs equal to zero. Okay, that was the toolkit for string sorting, and we can now design the first distributed string sorting algorithm called Distributed Merge String Sort, or MS in short. These are the standard distributed merge sort faces, but each with string specific building blocks from our toolkit. In black are the tools used in Fischer and Korpitz's simple distributed string sorting algorithm, and the blue ones are our improvements. 
In the beginning, the strings are distributed evenly among the processors. What evenly means here is actually difficult to say. Should the number of strings be equal or the number of characters? What we actually want is the distinguishing prefix to be equally distributed, or actually the workload to be distributed equally. The problem is, of course, how to estimate that before sorting. So the strings are distributed, and the first step is merge sort is to sort them locally. For this, we use a radix sort for strings, which we adapted to also store the LCP array while sorting, as I mentioned previously. This is then the input to a distributed partitioning algorithm which selects p-1 splitters with which the sorted arrays are split into p parts. Each processor then has p sorted parts which need to be exchanged with the other processors. For this string exchange we use the LCP compression technique to reduce communication volume for real world inputs. When the sorted pieces arrive at the destination processor, we need to merge them, and because they're sorted, we need to use a merge algorithm. For this, we use our LCP accelerated loser tree instead of the standard loser tree. So in principle, we augmented every step of the merge sort algorithm with LCP information and use it whenever possible. This is also the great advantage of merge sort for the distributed string sorting problem over sample sort. It is somewhat folklore knowledge that sample sort is usually faster than merge sort. However, in sample sort, there is no initial local sorting step. That actually happens at the end. However, the local sorting step actually reveals a lot about the input via the LCP array. And that is why we only considered merge sort in our paper. Okay, back to the actual algorithm. Let's have a closer look at the partitioning step. So each processor has a sorted array of strings and what we want are splitters, meaning specific strings or elements, such that in the end the number of strings or the number of characters on each processor is equal or approximately equal. We do this with equidistance sampling, which means we take every kth string from the sorted array and put it into a set of samples. This sample set is then sorted globally using a distributed string sorting algorithm, and from the sorted set, we pick p-1 equidistant splitters, which in the end yield an approximately equal distribution of the output. In the paper, we show that with the equidistant splitting, we actually get some guarantees on how well the output is balanced in the end. What, however, turned out to be unclear is whether to balance the output by the number of strings or the number of characters. This is especially difficult because the actual communication volume may still not be balanced because the LCP compression may reduce the transmitted data. So we have two splitting strategies, one for string-based sampling and one for character-based sampling. Both have provable guarantees, which you will find in the paper, but they deliver different results. One balances the number of strings, the other balances the number of characters. But neither the amount of work nor communication is necessarily linearly dependent on either of these in theory. But in practice, for real-world inputs, we still can assume that they are. And now we come to our second algorithm. The basic idea is that we try to reduce the amount of communication even further. In the end, we don't actually communicate the string data. We only determine their order, which is equivalent to calculating the permutation that is needed to sort the data. But to do that, we still have to consider all characters from the distinguishing prefix of the string set. With the LCP array, we can determine these locally, but not globally. The question remains how much of each string the other processors need to know how to sort correctly. For this, we devised an algorithm which approximates the distinguishing prefix using a distributed single-shot bloom filter approach, or DSBF for short. The idea is to hash an exponentially increasing prefix of all the strings and to run a distributed duplicate detection to determine which of these prefixes are unique. Thereby, we can approximately calculate which parts of the strings actually have to be transmitted without actually transmitting them. And it turns out that false positives from the Bloom filter's errors are on the right side, meaning that they may only lead to more unnecessary communication, but never to a wrong result. Okay, so let's look at this example. These are two processors, and each has a sorted string set, and each has one part of the distributed Bloom filter down here. So in the first round, we hash only the first character of each string, and each processor marks those bits in the Bloom filter for which it has a prefix. Using the distributed Bloom filter, we can thus detect that only one prefix hashes to 13, and thus we know that this prefix is unique. 
So we mark it as unique and continue with the second round, doubling the prefix we hash. So this time we hash two characters. And again, use the distributed Bloom filter to determine which hashes and thus which prefixes are unique. And in this example, there are three more unique hashes. These are removed from the working set and we continue with the next round, again doubling the prefix length to four. This time all prefixes are unique and thus we have determined an approximate distinguishing prefix for the string set. The processors now only have to exchange this prefix and can thus determine the sorted order of the strings. The remaining characters need not be transferred but can optionally of course be exchanged afterwards if the full strings are needed. There are many implementation details that go into the distributed Bloom filter. The hash values in a single shot distributed Bloom filter can be compressed using Gollum coding and you never have to actually build the bit vectors of the Bloom filter because it is easier to merge the incoming index streams to determine collisions. Speaking of collisions and false positives, as you maybe can guess, if you have two different unique prefixes that happen to map to the same hash value, then these are just detected as duplicates instead of uniques. This is of course an error, but this error will probably be corrected in the next round when a longer prefix is hashed. So the collision just costs more communication and affects the resulting approximate distinguishing prefix, but the end result is still correct. Okay, those were our two new algorithms. There are of course more details and theory and examples in the paper. Now let us look at some experimental results. We implemented our algorithms in C++ with MPI and copied the existing one from Fisher and Corpitz. Here's the list of algorithms we tested. FK merge is Fisher and Corpitz's simple merge sort. HQuick is a distributed quick sort not specialized for strings but just objects. We have two versions of our merge sort, MS simple without LCP compression and MS with LCP compression. And two versions of the prefix doubling merge sort, PDMS Gollum with Gollum compression and PDMS without Gollum compression. We ran these algorithms on a supercomputer at KIT called 4HLR1, which has these specs here. And we ran two experiments, the first a weak scaling experiment with randomly generated input and the second a strong scaling experiment with some real world inputs. To test the dependency of the algorithms on the ratio of distinguishing prefix capital D to total characters capital N, D to N, we designed an input generator that generates a string set with a specified D to N ratio. Small n is the number of strings, L is their length, and D divided by N is the ratio. The strings in the input set are split at the ratio, and the prefix is made unique by enumerating them using the letters from the alphabet. For the strong scaling experiments, we used web text from Common Crawl and DNA reads from the Thousand Genomes project. Of course, there are much more details to all of this in the paper. So let's look at the weak scaling results from different ratios of D to N. Each processor gets 500,000 strings of length 500. The first row of plots shows absolute time, and it would be great if these series stayed constant, because in each step on the x-axis we add more processes but also add more data. That these series are not constant is of course the case because of communication costs. We clearly see that H quick, the red line, the non-string optimized sorter is much slower than the specialized distributed string sorters. The next best sorter is FK merge, the brown line, which is always slower than our new algorithms. The time of FK merge also rises dramatically for a larger number of processors, and we trace this back to the sorting algorithm used to sort the samples. Next we see our MS simple and MS algorithms in blue and green. MS simple does not use LCP compression and is faster than MS only for the D to N ratio 0, where the LCP compression is only useless overhead. For the larger ratios, the MS algorithm performs consistently better than MS simple, so this means that the LCP compression actually does work and is beneficial. The fastest algorithms are however the prefix doubling algorithms. Whether to use Gollum coding or not seems to be inconsequential for this input. For larger D to N ratios, the merge sort algorithm is just as fast as the prefix doubling algorithm, but that is also clear because here the prefix approximation does not help and the whole distinguishing prefix has to be sent anyway. 
but as we can also see, the overhead of prefix doubling is very small. The bottom row of plots show the number of bytes per string. Each string is 500 bytes, and this is what you can see in cent per string for the MS simple algorithm for any D to N ratio. The MS algorithm with LCP compression can obviously send less bytes per string for larger D to N ratios, and that is why the green line drops stepwise. For small d to n, the prefix doublers have to communicate very, very little information. Compared to the MS algorithms, one can see a small rise in bytes for them in the first three ratios here. For d to n ratio 0.75, the prefix doublers encounter a bad case. They perform many rounds of doubling to find prefixes, but these turn out to be very large and they have to be sent anyway. And in the ratio 1, every string is different, and LCP compression again helps the prefix doublers. Those were the weak scaling experiments, and now let's look at the strong scaling results for our real-world inputs. The common crawl input is 82 gigabytes of English text, or well, actually text from random web pages. Again, our algorithms can improve a lot over FK merge and HQuick. It however appears that the 82 gigabyte input is quite small for 1280 cores, because the improvements start to level off. MS Simple is again the baseline we should look at for these comparisons. Apparently the average line length is 40 bytes. If we add LCP compression we get MS, which is roughly a factor 3 faster and transmits only 25 bytes per string. That's pretty nice. The prefix doubling algorithms are on this input slightly faster than MS, but not by a lot, and also communicate approximately the same amount of data as MS. This time Gollum coding did have a noticeable effect on the transmitted data size, but relative to the string data it appears to be a smaller component of the overall communication size. For DNA reads, again first consider MS simple. This time the merge sorted approach is slightly faster than the prefix doubling approach, also, the speed of MS Simple and MS are very close, but MS again transfers a lot less data. While the prefix doubling algorithms take slightly longer on DNA than the MS variants, they do transmit roughly only 80 bytes or 50 bytes per string instead of the 100 bytes MS Simple needs, which is the average line length of the DNA reads. We can conclude that the DNA reads are highly random and thus have a long distinguishing prefix because the LCP compression only has a very small effect. This of course is a disadvantage for the prefix doubling algorithms because they perform many rounds of bloom filter duplicate detection which turn out to be overhead in time, but in terms of communication they do improve on the simple merge sorts. And this brings us to the summary of this talk. We presented two new communication-efficient distributed sorting algorithms for strings. The first is an LCP-improved distributed string merge sort called MS. The second a distributed prefix doubling string merge sort called PDMS, which uses bloom filters to detect an approximate distinguishing prefix and communicate only that. The paper contains a lot more on the theory behind the algorithms and the experiments we did. We learned that there appear to be different strategies one wants to take depending on the D to N ratio, but choosing the right one a priori is difficult. Links to the source code and this recording of our talk can be found on the website shown on the slides. For future work one can consider how to better balance work by looking at both strings and characters and attempting to estimate the work needed to sort or merge them. And then of course there is the question of whether one can show some lower bounds for this problem. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions you will have to ask me virtually by emailing me at bingman at kit.edu. And again, thank you for listening to this virtual conference talk.